Hi, welcome to Moomoo Math. Today we are going to look at the quadratics unit and we're going to go through the review sheet in little chunks. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the characteristics of quadratic functions. So let's start just with the simple vertex. The vertex of a quadratic is either the maximum or the minimum point. In this case, since this is a down-facing parabola, it's going to be a maximum. So at the point 4, comma 3 is the vertex. So we just count over x is 4, y is negative 3, and that's the ordered pair. Now the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the line with which we could fold this parabola and it would match up on either side so it's you know you could spin it around that axis and it's symmetric. Okay so what's the equation of a vertical line? It's always x is equal to and it's always x is equal to the x coordinate of the vertex. So it's x equals h if you know your a, h, and k's. Uh, the domain. Domain is the values you can plug in for x and because this graph goes left forever and right forever and there's no limit that means it's all real numbers so any value can be plugged in for the domain. Now the range, uh, that's your y values. So as you can see, we start here on the y-axis and go down. So it, what we're going to do is we're actually going to read that off the off the y-axis because domain is your out, or your range is your output. So let's go over on the y-axis. We're starting here and we're going down forever. So what value is that? That's negative three. So it's all the y's that are less than or equal to negative three because negative three is an output. So we will include negative three. Now let's look at our interval of increase and decrease. Okay, interval of increase is where the graph is going up, left to right. So this left side of the parabola is our interval of increase. How do we write that? Well, we read it off the x-axis. So from negative infinity, so all these values over here, all the way up to the vertex, and the vertex is at 4, the interval increases. So from negative infinity up to 4. So don't be confused and use negative 3. We read that off the x-axis. Okay, do we include 4? No, because that's a neutral place. That's the change of direction. Okay, where does the graph decrease? It decreases from the vertex to the right. So that's from 4 and then all the, the x's to the right, which is positive infinity. And that's how you find the interval of increase and decrease. Again, you're reading it off of the x-axis. Okay, average rate of change. Average rate of change is just basically your slope, but it's a slope of a curve. So it's going to be different on different intervals. So let's look at the average rate of change from the value 1. Oh, let's see, 1 looks like it's at the point 1, comma, negative 10 and then up to the value of 4 on the x-axis. So we're looking at this interval from 1 to 4, and that ordered pair is 4, negative 3. So I'm going to write those down. Let's see, I've got 1, negative 10, and 4, negative 3. Okay, what's the slope of that line? Well, let's see, it's going up, so it's positive. Okay, so I'm going to have a negative 3 minus a negative 10, y2 minus y1 over x2, which is 4, minus 1. So that's going to give me, what, 7 over 3, so 7 thirds. And it is positive because it's going up. Okay, now let's look at our, our max and mins. Okay, because this is a down-facing parabola, we have a maximum value right here at the vertex. Well, maxes and mins are read as up-down coordinates, which is a y-coordinate. So we're going to say the maximum value here is negative 3. So we have a max at negative 3. Okay, our y-intercept, that's the next value we're looking for. I'm going to slide this up just a hair. Okay, our y-intercept is where this graph crosses the y-axis. Well, we can't quite see it, but I've estimated it to be crossing, so the parabola crosses the axis at about negative 15, and we write that as an ordered pair, 0, comma, negative 15, because it is a point. Okay, where does this graph, let's, I'm going to go back and pull it back down for a second. Where does this graph cross the x-axis? Well, it doesn't. So this one doesn't have any x-intercepts. So on this part, on this x-intercept part, I can actually write one of two things. Okay, I can say, well, we don't have any, so we have none for x-intercepts. But we actually do have some, there are just two complex answers. So when we get to the, uh, 
the next unit and we're starting to find solutions, we're actually going to learn that, that that one has two complex solutions instead of just none. But there are no real solutions. It never crosses the x-axis. Okay, and then the final characteristic is end behavior. We read it like this. We, t we say as x goes to the right or as x goes to positive infinity, what does the function do? What does the output do? Well, let's look. Okay, as x gets bigger, which is to positive infinity, as x is going this way, what's the graph doing? The graph's going down. So we're going to say the graph goes to negative infinity because it never stops. It just keeps going. Okay, how about to the left? As x goes to negative infinity, so as x gets smaller, what's the graph doing? Well, the graph's going down still. So that means as x goes to negative infinity, the function also goes to negative infinity. Now notice on a quadratic, these end behaviors are always going to be the same. Either your graph's going to go down and down as it goes out, or in this case, it's going to go up and up. Okay, so the end behaviors on quadratics are going to be the same. There you go. That, those are the characteristics of a quadratic function, and I hope this video was helpful.